Greetings! Welcome to the devlog for Alpha 5 of Update 110 of Hot Dogs, Horseshoes, and Hand Grenades. We're going to start off as always with a quick sound check. Make sure your speakers aren't up too high. Wonderful. So what have we got for you this week? Well, this week was a big focus week for me for the other verticals of our new take and hold level. Obviously, I've been spending a ton of time on the environment over the past couple weeks because there's just a ton of work to do, but that's not the only new thing that is coming. The other two big things that are coming is new enemies and new encryption types. So let's go ahead and jump right in and talk about some changes that I've made to our little bot spawning testing panel here. There are our new operator SOSIGs, which I will show you in a minute and explain how they work. And we also have the ability to debug spawn ourselves some encryptions, which is gonna be really relevant today to seeing what new fresh horrors you are all going to deal with in Take and Hold. So let's start with our new operator SOSIGs that are going to be a part of our competitive character. There's sort of three base types of armor equipment. This is the light one, which the equivalent in the sort of standard SWAT uh, style SOSIG versions would just be sort of Kevlar. And what's different about this light one, and this is a theme that runs through all of our competitive SOSIGs, is that we have reduced weak point hit points. So you'll notice that with this one, that it has Kevlar for a majority of its armor. So if I just take a straight 45 ACP, it's going to, whoops, as I drop my pistol, it's going to deflect there. But obviously, if we just score a headshot with it, bap. Sorry, buddy. Is this one gonna stand up? Ah, yes. I am testing for this a. It'll just be over here. There we go. I'm testing having them have slightly more damage resistance. So in this case, three pistol shots to the head brings one down, three standard ones. But you will also notice that while a rifle caliber weapon will penetrate their Kevlar like such and do significant damage to them. They have a plate in the front and in the back. They also have this backpack, which is good at blocking things, which reduces the zone from a frontal engagement standpoint that will bring them down in a single rifle hit. <laughs> so that one just goes down with the light helmet with one. Let's test here. Oops, accidentally hit him twice. He's going to bleed out, I bet. Uh, oh, oh, still standing. Cool. Where's to the front? Blap. Explodey beans. So that is our light. Our medium one here, as you can see, has a gas mask here. It has a visor, has the NVGs on it. Uh, significantly larger plate surfaces in the front that completely resist standard rifle caliber rounds still takes damage to the Kevlar cloth areas, but doesn't go down as fast. So you're definitely gonna have to get repeated hits to keep one down. So a difference from the fact that the standard medium wiener is still frequently a single hit down with a rifle caliber weapon. Whereas this one straight to the face, he should stand back up. Yep, he'll still stand back up. So you have to get that second hit to actually bring them down with a rifle caliber weapon. Let's clean up all of our volunteer bodies here. I'm so sorry, guys. And then this is your new nightmare. This is our heavy operator SOSIG. This is the most armored SOSIG I have ever put in the game. And part of the, the logic behind the design of this one is that frequently in late run take and hold, you are kitted to the absolute gills. You've got a battle rifle tier weapon frequently, oftentimes with AP or API ammo, which means that you can still effectively take two to three shot aim duels and completely destroy the target before they shoot you. And I wanted specifically to make this target not function that way. So from a body frontage standpoint, it's basically invulnerable. It's a double layer of armor on the front, even on the face and helmet. Standard hits don't do much. If you get them right in the visor, 
you can momentarily stun them down, but it's only done a little bit of damage to them. And the reason for this is that you essentially, he is designed to have to be brought down by actually hitting his weak points. And the weak points for him is his cloth on the rear of his leg links. which this is just FMJ, not AP, so is not gonna actually tear through him very fast. As I said, this is essentially balanced around the assumption that you are, there we go, getting some higher test weaponry. So here's 556 five, AP. As you can see, significantly you more damage. You really do, buddy. Same concept, drop via the eye slip. Take out via hitting the weak points. Oh, he's not down yet. There is a secondary weak point, which you actually saw him bleed from, which is if you can actually strike the unarmored neck part. For serious? Indeed. So none of this is a final. Um, I'm still trial and erroring the various weapon classes, various weapon plus ammo classes against these, but in a big way, these are designed to be the bosses of the competitive take and hold character, where during the sort of final wave for a given hold, every time a wave of soldiers comes in, it's a bunch of mediums and a single heavy. And in a really big way, that heavy is acting both as an area denial and something that you have to pay attention to, to either continue stunning them down and slowly taking them out. And while this obviously is extreme from a quote realism standpoint, it is designed to really counter the fact that you can be running around with, you know, 200 rounds of AP in a drum at that point in a take and hold match and is designed to still be a severe challenge for those of you who are really good at take and hold. Let's clean up our Sosix. All right, next up, let us take a look at encryptions. So as I mentioned, this can spawn all of our existing ones. So you can just pop a hardened in, bammo, pop a stealth in. Oh, did it? <laughs> Wasn't even sure it spawned it. It's super fun being able to look at these and play with them as they come into and out of cloak visibility. Super fun. But, so the first thing on the list is I have redesigned the regenerative encryption. And I've done this for a couple reasons. The first of which is that it has long been a design problem that pretty much no one figures out the way the classic regenerative encryption worked, which is that you had to shoot the center of it to stall out its regeneration and then shoot its extents. Pretty much everyone had to be told uh, that this is how it worked, which is a design failure because that wasn't the case with any of the other ones. The second problem is because of the way those tendrils came off in more topologically complex maps, every now and again, a tendril would essentially spawn around a corner or in an inconvenient spot that felt annoying. So I have replaced it with something that once again is, is designed to be a fun culmination, uh, an assumption that you have a weapon with a high capacity at the end of a take and hold run. And so let's take a look at our new regenerative encryption. It is a volumetric target with 125 subzones. And if you're first like, wait, you mean I have to shoot this 125 times? No, you don't, because the way this works, this was actually inspired by like CS2's uh, volumetric smoke, is that when we shoot through this, you can see that it actually cross penetrates through the target volumetrically as the bullets go through. And this is true uh, even of like non AP rounds. And then slowly a bunch of those cells will start to come back over time. Like one in six of them comes in back fairly fast and the rest of them take a good deal longer. So if I just tear through this a bunch. So a bunch of them are still here. I will 
obviously just not shoot it so you can see how long it takes for these to start to come back. This is still something that I'm going to tune. I've tried so far doing this with like 30 round capacity rifles, 60 round capacity rifles, etc. Just to make sure that it's tenable. It should be hard, um, but should obviously not be impossible. Let's see if just off the cuff I can bring this down. <laughs> ammo and so there we go taken apart and still have some rounds in the drum next one up this is uh this was an uh, an older idea i'm not actually 100 percent positive i'm going to go with this but the idea for the polymorphic encryption is that it was basically a, a fusion of the agile and the recursive encryption and that we have a multi-shot target except it is there we go. Moving around. Lamo, like so. I don't know how difficult that will end up being in a more complex room, which is why this is going to need some testing, but that is the provisional one there. The cascading encryption, which I showed off on my Twitter ages ago, the idea of this is it's a multi-hit encryption uh, that with more complex movements. So we blast it apart into these sub pieces and then each one of these Etc. I'm not 100% decided on whether that's too many subtargets to be interesting. These are all designed to be boss encryption, so they should be hard. They should require a whole bunch of ammo to bring down, but obviously it's a, you know, it's a balancing act between that complexity and it being interesting and it being the right kind of difficult. I like this one because it sort of uses very natural physics emotion. And then the last one here, I am not going to actually try to beat. This is this is another sort of design test that I would very much like the competitive uh, take and hold players to give a shot. This is called the orthogonal encryption. And this is another multi-hit similar to the uh, recursive, except for the fact, as you're about to see, that it has a whole bunch of beam lasers coming out of it and moves one axis at a time. It moves sequentially for it, so it always goes X, Y, Z in its motion. So it is predictable from the perspective of getting cover. You'll also notice that it always moves in a, in a, it attempts to move, move the greatest amount in a given direction. So it's sort of three motions uh, at the top, three motions at the bottom. So a while dangerous and able to do damage from you, it shouldn't, if you're paying attention to its movement, be able to like BS you for damage because of the fact that it is moving via a strict set of rules that you can practice dealing with. So difficult, but not random and hopefully not frustrating, but something you definitely want to avoid because those lasers can very quickly do a whole bunch of damage to you. Oh, do, 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 do. Right now, it has eight quadrants, three targets apiece, which might be too difficult. It might be the sort of thing that it would make more sense to simply make this an eight hit target because you essentially have to get an angle from all sides. I would really love some feedback in regards to this. So those of you who enjoy high level take and hold, spawn one in here, maybe even spawn some SOSIGs to fight against and just get a sense of whether or not this is something that feels untenable or ridiculous at 24 uh, subzones and whether it should be eight instead or if you just have other thoughts on it. So this is one of those things where I love I love just putting in, oh, don't get hit by, oh, go, <laughs> get hit by the laser. Uh, so yeah, it's one of those things that I'm putting this in in this experimental stage because I want to really, you know, have the high level take and hold be something that is compelling and difficult but not unfair and ridiculous for those of you who like to play take and hold at a really high level. So yeah, 
<laughs> You'll notice that I have designed the size of this very specifically such that if you can get up against a wall that is the same as its movement extents, you can escape the beam. As I said, dangerous, but not inescapable. So yeah, so that is what I have to show you folks this week. Uh, let me go ahead and jump out of VR. Yo! So in addition to what I just showed you, the other stuff that is in this week's build is that we have, thanks to Stefan, a whole bunch of extra replacement cartridge models. We have finally gotten around to the rimless rifle ones. So 5.8 by 42 millimeter, 280 British, 300 Win Mag, 308 Winchester, 338 Lapua, 408 Cheyenne, 556 by 45, 762 by 51, 30 out six Springfield and 300 blackout all have replacement modern cartridge models that look absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I have added variants for the JHP, AP, AP incendiary and incendiary to 5.8 by 42 and 300 blackout now has some sweet looking subsonic JHPs that have the like glow in the dark tips on them. Just so they're easier to see, I guess, when you're in complete darkness. Uh, that just look super cool because they're like a glowy green tip on the cartridge itself. So uh, I didn't, I should have actually shown this off in the devlog, but my controllers just ran out of battery. But teleport and dash locomotion, the way that it finds a valid point has been completely rewritten in this alpha. So if you play on teleport or dash, give it a shot. Uh, it has been rewritten to basically make it so that it handles things like stairs way better. The way the old code, and I mean old, I mean very old code worked, is that as the as the arced ray was coming out, if it struck like a flat surface like this, it would essentially, basically anything past like 45 would go invalid and not do any more complex parsing. Now what it does when it strikes a wall or part of a stairs is that it essentially tries to back up, cast down, and then see if the player would fit near up against what you've cast against. Uh, and this makes it work like a million times better with stairs. To those of you who play with those sorts of locomotion modes, I'm sorry it took me so long to get past this. Honestly, it's, it's one of those things that I wrote this code so long ago that it didn't even occur to me to go back and uh, do this. But it was in testing things in our new institution level that I realized, man, if you're using low, you know, teleporter dash, it's real irritating to go up and down the long flights of stairs. This should fix this. It should make it work just as well without adding uh, ways in which you can sort of glitch locomotes. So that is in there. There's also a new option. You can, if you don't like those little corners that appear when you go to teleport or dash that show where your play space extents are, you can disable those now in the advanced options for teleport and dash. And then the last major change that <clears throat> I made is that I significantly reduced the ignition incidence for all API and incendiary rounds based on, um, based on type. This is a balance thing that uh, largely has to do with the sort of high level competitive balance with the competitive SOSIGs. Um, and given the fact that like real API rounds don't just spontaneously light a regular person on fire, they are incendiary in a very different sort of context. This being a sort of fictional thing, I feel, you know, I feel way more open to tweak this manually for the perspective of game balance instead of a lot of the other sort of parameters as it relates to ballistics, because this is effectively an entirely fictional result of the impact of these rounds anyway. And so I want to make it so that when you're playing taken hold at a high level, incendiary rounds don't just are, aren't just sort of automatic armor bypassing because they can ignite a SOSIG link and do damage that transmits through their armor. It still happens, but that it, that it's, it's less reliable now. So <coughs> it'll make the process of picking what ammo uh, you have at the, in those more difficult take and hold runs, uh, make it a little more interesting, I think. So, yeah. Cool. Well, that just about does it for this week. As I said, um, those of you who play Take and Hold at a high level, the first to worst community, I'm looking at you. Uh, definitely try out some of these new changes. I would love to see your feedback. These are all things that I'm going to just keep 
iterating on in parallel with the new level and the new level content and some of the other systems that are going to be going in um, as the competitive character is going to be very high on the boss encryptions. Also, once these new encryption types have been tested, balanced, integrated in, they will be filtered in where appropriate into the other take and hold characters. Obviously, some of the characters are not going to be getting them. Like it doesn't make these high hit count ones don't make sense for Cal Wiener Calico. Um, but for Soldier of Fortune Frankie, basically any character that gets high capacity, high rate of fire weapons, these are going to be fantastic for. And I hope it 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 helps make a, a more interesting culmination. And just, I mean, who doesn't love just once you, once you actually get a machine gun and take and hold, just having to use it on fun switch mode. And that's what a whole bunch of these are. Some of these are about precision shooting and some of these are just about holding down the trigger and going ham. So I hope you find them enjoyable. So. Well, I hope you all have yourselves a wonderful weekend and I'll see y'all soon. Peace.